I'm Jim Shields, your town moderator, and I'd like to welcome you to this, the annual preview of the annual town meeting, which this year is May 18th, Monday, May 18th, at 7 o'clock and at the high school. And as you know from years past, uh, we meet with the various proponents of the articles, the sponsors of the articles, that you, the voters, will be asked to act upon at the town meeting and get from those proponents and sponsors uh, a brief explanation of what it is they're going to be asking you to consider and vote upon. We have a somewhat shorter warrant this year than in prior years. There are 23 articles, uh, at least one of which will not be acted upon and a couple of others may not be acted upon. You're going to be asked to uh, approve uh, a budget which is, uh, according to the recommendations of the Appropriations Committee, approximately $54 million. There are no zoning issues from the Planning Board this year, um, and for the first time, there are, you'll be asked to consider uh, the use of enterprise funds for the Water and Sewer Department. So with that, let's go through the various articles on the warrant. Article 1 is uh, an article by which the town's uh, committees and commissions and so forth uh, submit their reports uh, to the town, and all of those reports uh, are contained in the annual town report, which is available, uh, I believe, online, but certainly in both, uh, I believe it's in CD form and also in printed form, and uh, may even be available the evening of the town meeting. Article 2 of the warrant uh, addresses what many people think to be the most important part of the annual town meeting, and that is the adoption of a budget for the upcoming fiscal year. It's a process that the Appropriations Committee begins in the fall and works arduously towards uh, arriving at a final budget for your consideration at the May 18 meeting. Here to explain that process and the components of the budget is Eric Madison, the chair of the Appropriations Committee. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. We do begin the process quite early in the year. We begin generally in the fall in September or early October where we start um, calculating, if you will, our anticipated revenues um, for the pr next fiscal year. Uh, we do that by uh, calculating the revenues available under the constraints of Prop 2.5 through taxation within town. And then as the year grows on, uh, goes on, we also start um, figuring how much money we're going to get from the state through, uh, through local aid. Um, and when the governor comes out with his budget, we generally uh, begin by using those numbers. We monitor throughout the process the legislature and their work both on the House side and the Senate side to try to gauge uh, to some degree uh, the amount of revenue that we're going to get uh, in local aid from the state. That process um, actually at this point even in the fiscal year isn't complete as the, the legislature has not yet acted uh, on, the, on the budget. Um, but I think a, a pretty clear picture has been painted um, within a few thousand dollars of what East Long Meadow can expect uh, for revenues. Uh, and those are reflected in our re budget recommendations this year. We then in uh, December, we uh, start meeting with the departments. We uh, ask them, we, we offer them some, some guidelines for the budget development. Uh, we ask them to develop their budgets on what they need for the uh, next fiscal year's operations. Um, they usually submit those to us in early January, um, not long after the holidays. In January, we start meeting with each of the departments. Uh, we go over their budget submissions with them um, in quite a bit of detail. Um, we review all the expenses. Uh, sometimes we discuss alternatives. Uh, sometimes we look at the various options. Uh, we also look at any requests they have to increasing their services or budget or um, staffing or anything like that for the next fiscal year. Uh, and we weigh that against uh, all the other priorities in town uh, in terms of the, uh, the available revenues to fund such initiatives. By generally in uh, March, uh, we're getting a better sense um, of our total revenue picture and we start formulating our budget recommendations uh, that are generally complete by uh, early April, at which time uh, we hold our public hearing, which was held uh, very recently uh, for, the, for the FY16 budget, um, and we, we uh, prepare for uh, uh, 
our annual town meeting. So it is a several month uh, process. This year, uh, an awful lot of our focus was on the tax rate. Um, uh, the committee is concerned at the tax rate growing uh, quite steadily um, in town. There's a magical number, if you will, um, under the constraints of the prop two, what we know is a prop two and a half, the tax limitation legislation, that um, when we reach a $25 per thousand um, amount uh, of taxation in the town, and that's exclusive of debt exclusions, like for example, a, a school building uh, project. Um, when we reach that $25 per thousand cap, we're, we're done raising revenues. We can't go any higher than that. And uh, so it's not a position that we want to see the town in. Since 2008, if you would remember, in 2008, the, uh, the nationwide, we suffered a uh, kind of a fall on Wall Street, if you will. Uh, many folks are referring to it as a, as a uh, real estate crash. Uh, in which uh, many of us um, either lost value in our properties um, to, to many folks, um, and at the very best, uh, the value of your property remained stagnant and didn't grow as we've become accustomed to prior to 2008. And that really is what is uh, causing the steady increase in our tax, um, uh, tax rate since 2008. In 2008, our tax rate was $16.06 .06 per thousand. In 2015, it's $20.72 per thousand. And in 2016, our proposed budget, um, an estimated tax rate would be $21.43. And you can see by this graph um, that we have, it, it, it illustrates the steady and continuous climb of the tax rate. Without property values, uh, increasing periodically, um, the tax rate absorbs all of the increases, if you will, to the, the town's annual budget. That's concerning to us, and we, we went into this year's budget formulation with an eye on the tax rate. So with that said, uh, the, the um, tax rate um, was of a great concern, and we utilized that to guide us when we were... Um, developing our budget in, in terms of the revenues. The revenues, as I've il illustrating here on the next slide, that we're recommending for this year are 38,678,000 dollars raised by real estate and personal property taxes. I want to point out that the, um, the potential under the constraints of Prop 2.5 that we could raise by real estate and personal property taxes is some $407,000 greater than this number. We have hoped and tried to find a balance, uh, if you will, between raising the additional revenues needed to operate the town uh, for the next year, uh, at the same time not, not taxing to the maximum levy capacity uh, therefore bringing us closer to that $25 mark. Local receipts, um, which are made up of licenses, permits, uh, interest we earn on money in the bank, uh, rental fees, and uh, in some cases even payments in lieu of taxes from nonprofits, make up about um, $3.2 in our revenue. The state aid number we're using right now, we're estimating at $11,400,000 based upon the governor's budget that he submitted to the legislature. At this date, there have been some numbers that have come out of both the House and the Senate, and although they vary slightly from the governor's budget, um, the numbers in, in any uh, additional revenues uh, promised East Long Meadow are, are minimal at best. MSBA reimbursements are money that we receive from the state. Uh, that is paying the state's share, if you will, of the bond that built Birchland Park Middle School. That's a revenue that when that school is paid off, we'll lose, we will no longer get. And then other miscellaneous transfers account for 161,000 of the revenue this year. And that's transfers from various uh, revolving funds, uh, and, uh, such as the Community Preservation Fund that pays um, bonds that, to, that, uh, uh, for projects that were approved at town meeting, private, previous town meetings. So the revenues that we are um, putting forward as a recommendation is $54,257,077, or a 2.28% increase um, from uh, 
from last year's revenues. On the uses side, in other words, the budget end of uh, the recommendations, um, we're putting forth recommendations for employee benefits of $8,438,454. Now, employee benefits are th items such as retirement contributions, health insurance, workers' comp, and those types of items. Our general government expenses, um, general government expenses are kind of a category. We didn't really know what else to name it. Those are things like our trash collection. Uh, it's legal services that the town has to, uh, has to have both labor attorneys and, and general town attorneys, um, as well as a reserve fund, um, is about $1.5 million in expenses. Debt services, which of course is paying back any of the loans or bonds that we have taken out for projects in town over the years, of $3,057,000. The education budget for our school system in town, we are recommending a budget of just over $28 million this year. Public works bu um, budget is $3,847,000. I want to point out a couple items. The public works budget this year is a little different than um, the voters have seen in the past, and we'll, we'll get to that shortly. Um, it, the public works budget this year will not include the water and sewer. Those will be dealt with in separate warrant articles. Um, however, the remaining portions of the public works is in that number, meaning the highway division, um, the, the facilities and grounds. Um, and also including that number is the utilities. Um, the DPW uh, is in charge of the utility costs for all of the buildings in town, regardless of who occupies that building. In public safety, just over three and a half million dollars in recommended expenditures. Then all the other departments, which are made up of things like the assessors, the clerk's office, the collector, information technology, accounting, selectmen, library, etc., account for three point six million dollars in the expenses. We do have this year, uh, obviously after the winter that we just experienced, we have a significant snow and ice deficit. A snow and ice deficit is the amount of money it costs us to clear the snow and ice throughout the winter um, in excess of the money that was appropriated at last year's annual town meeting to deal with snow and ice. This year we are recommending carrying forward $225,000 of the current fiscal year's snow and ice deficit into next year. It is the only expense uh, and only debt that we are allowed under state statute to carry forward into the next fiscal year. In the stabilization fund, we are recommending a $100,000 deposit. Now, the stabilization fund is our rainy day fund, if you will. It is a, uh, a separate accounted fund um, of our savings account where we put money each year uh, and build our savings account for either large expenditures or unforeseen major expenditures. And an example of that would be a, a major weather event that caused significant damage to our town or something like that. We would have the savings account there to deal with it. In capital this year, um, we are recommending to raise and appropriate $919,000. Now, when you look at the capital budget this year, it will be for more than $919,000 but you'll notice that a portion of that we are recommending that comes from free cash or money in our reserves from previous fiscal years. Then we have uh, about $873,000 in expenses and other miscellaneous expenses. And, and although that's a lot of money, um, they are, there's just a, a variety of different accounts that, that comes out of things such as our real estate abatement account. Um, OPEB, our other post-employment benefits, um, state charges, uh, town meeting articles that we anticipate coming up that will need to be funded. Uh, those all fall in the other miscellaneous category. So we are recommending expenditures of $54,257,077, or a 2.28% increase from last year. Again, I'd like to emphasize that it's a lesser increase than the potential allowed under Prop 2.5. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that the 
public works budget is going to appear a little bit differently. Um, we are also recommending in article, I believe it's eight and nine this year of the warrant. Um, if you recall last year, we voted to um, create what's referred to as enterprise funds for the water and sewer funds. Um, one enterprise fund for the water and one enterprise fund for the sewer. Under the statute that guides enterprise funds for water and sewer accounts, they have to be, those budgets, both the revenue side and the expense side, has to be approved at the town meeting in their own warrant articles and not part of the regular budget. So we are bringing forth the recommendation of about two and a half million dollars in revenues uh, generated through the, the, the uh, water use, if you will, and about two and a half million dollars in expenses in the water fund. And likewise, in the sewer fund, about $1.9 million in revenues and $1.9 million in expenses. But that's going to look a little bit different to the voters this year because they, they were accustomed to that being part of the Department of Public Works uh, budget in the past. So all that combined, what does that include um, in this year's budget? There are some things that we were able to to include in addition to previous fiscal years and still keep the tax rate um, at a from to growing at a reasonable level, if you will. Some of those items are enhanced fire protection uh, by increasing the hours of full-time coverage at the fire department. It funds a full-time health inspector. It funds 2.4 new school positions in the uh, obviously in the school department additionally it maintains a healthy level of reserves of, of roughly six percent just over six percent um, in reserves meaning the stabilization fund and free cash the maintenance of reserves is is important for from for many aspects uh, not the least of which is it's one of the items that is looked at um, by the bond rating institutes out there, such as Moody's, um, when they set our bond rating. Our bond rating dictates the interest that we pay on any money borrowed in town. So a healthy reserve certainly helps keep that uh, bond rating low and those interest rates low. Additionally, the Department of Revenue recommends uh, anywhere from a 6 to 9 percent um, maintenance of reserves um, for the just in case if you will um, and to be able to deal with tight budget years when they do occur it uses no free cash to balance any of the annual costs in this year budget that's been a goal of the appropriations committee we reached that goal last year uh, we're building on it this year to start including um, capital um, expenses out of the normal as part of the normal budget uh, process and again um, it's using none of the free cash for any of the annual costs we do pay down the snow and ice deficit in one year um, doing this rather than carrying it through into uh, additional fiscal years and we continue to contribute to the town's uh, other post employment benefits uh, the liabilities which are calculated in the millions for our community and we really need to start addressing that at some point in the future. Um, and we're, we started last year uh, by putting $50,000 into an account, which frankly is a drop in the bucket when you look at the liabilities. Uh, but we're continuing that this year uh, with another $50,000 into the OPEB liability fund. That's it. Well, thank you very much to you and your committee. And I would uh, add to what uh, Eric said is the if you wish to have the detail of the various line items in the budget, uh, they are included in the warrant. Uh, they're attached, I believe, as Exhibit A, where all of the expenditures uh, that are being sought for approval are broken down uh, line by line. And we will be going through each of those lines at the town meeting for your uh, affirmative or negative vote. By far the biggest component of the town's budget is that portion of the budget dedicated to our educational system in the schools. And here to explain the budget from the school's perspective is our superintendent of schools and the chairman of the school committee, Rich Ricciaro and Gordon Smith. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having us. We always enjoy the opportunity to 
meet with you before town meeting and, and share some of our thoughts around our budget. Uh, as we begin any budget development process each year, one of the uh, core pieces that we look at is that we continue our mission for all our students as they go through our grades to make sure that they're prepared as they graduate to contribute to uh, an increasingly global community. Um, that's at the heart of any budget development. And the school committee uh, feels that a school system's budget is the most important factor to impact every student's success. And we do that by allowing the district to meet its goals for all its students. So we've always appreciated, and, and we've said this at the uh, town budget hearing, but uh, the incredible support and value that the town of East Longmeadow places on education. You certainly can feel that anytime you're in our schools or throughout the community. That, that's impressive and, and certainly something that we're very thankful for. Um, each year, and certainly this year, the school committee works really closely with our appropriations committee, um, usually from December on when they're developing the budget and they're looking at two things. They want to meet student needs. That's the most crucial area that, on which we need to focus, while also being fiscally responsible. So as we approach town meeting this year, uh, we think we're in a really good position where the Appropriations Committee, and, and we agree, they're recommending a 2.1% increase to the school department's budget for the next fiscal year. Um, and that should allow us not only to bring programs back, at their current status and current strength and support for students, but also allow us to expand in key critical areas. Well, thank you. And I would remind our viewers that uh, the school committee made a more expanded uh, presentation of some of the particulars of their budget at the public hearing that the Appropriations Committee held at the high school uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that uh, presentation in its entirety can be viewed on uh, the town's LCAT uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel. And I would encourage uh, all of you to uh, view that to see not only the school committee's uh, uh, input, but the appropriation committee uh, chair, Eric Madison, uh, his explanation of how the budget was developed for, for this coming fiscal year. Article three is the capital budget for the town. The capital budget relates to assets that have uh, a longer useful life than, than uh, stuff that gets used up in one year or that costs more than $20,000. And here to explain how the capital budget was developed and what the budget will be like is the chair of that committee, Rocco Carabetta. Rocco. Good evening. At, uh, Mr. Shields said, I am the uh, chairman of the Capital Planning Committee. And tonight I'll be showing you the recommendations for the uh, FY 2016 uh, budget. The Capital Planning Committee is made up of a group of people that volunteer their time to evaluate all the capital uh, requests of $20,000 or more with a minimum of three year life. We begin our meetings in September and have weekly meetings of all the capital projects until all the capital projects are evaluated and reviewed with each department and boards. We then make our recommendations to the Appropriations Committee for the inclusion in the town budget. Members include four members appointed by the moderator and the Board of Selectmen, one being a town employee, two members from the Appropriations Committee, a recording secretary, members for the uh, FY16 um, committee are myself as chairman, Ryan Quimby as co-chairman and town employee, Steve Loyak is appointed, Sam Pizzinelli, uh, an appropriation committee member, uh, Conrad Wispicki is appointed, Thomas O'Connor is appointed, Pauline Saletti is our recording secretary. This year we reviewed 34 capital projects totaling $7,381,492. Our objectives this year to evaluate each project's urgency, need, and benefit to the community. Prioritize all the projects submitted based upon the outcome of the evaluation with the highest priority assigned to number one. Assign available funds to the highest priority. We work with all the departments to close completed projects, availing uns unspent funds for the projects. We work with Appropriations Committee to establish a budget for the new spending. 
Recommended projects and funding at the annual town meeting. After an extensive review of the, the proposed project, each one is placed in a one, of the, one or more of the following categories. Public safety, government mandate, capital infrastructure maintenance, improved operations, energy efficiency, quality of life, and new operations. This year, we, we emphasized on maintaining current infrastructure, programs, and assets. Our priorities were based on the need, urgency, and the benefit. The highest priority projects match the available appropriate funds sources. Typical uh, funding sources are the general fund, fund raised from taxation, including uh, debt payments, <clears throat> the water revenue fund, generated from residents paying the water bill, the sewer uh, enterprise fund, I'm sorry, the uh, sewer enterprise fund generated from residue, revenue paying from the sewer bills. We also have uh, money returned from closed capital projects. Uh, these are projects that were approved in the past and had uh, money that was not spent that can be uh, reapplied to other capital projects. We also use free cash. That's unexpended general funds from previous physical years. Special accounts, revenue raised from specific purposes used only su to support those purposes. And one of the, the um, examples is LCAT. LCAT has a revolving fund that is self-supporting. Our recommended project for FY16 from the general fund are the school department we, uh, re replacement of uh, school buses at $255,000, a hot water tank at the high school for $25,000, console of the aging, a 80 kilowatt generator for $45,000, the police department, which is an annual thing, we try to keep up to, up to date with all the cruisers. This year we're uh, recommending two new uh, police cruisers at $76,022. The information technology, which includes the school and all the town government. That's all the computers and uh, everything that uh, we use throughout the town at $368,179. Further recommendations from the Public Works Department and Maintenance is our annual sidewalk fund of $75,000. Summers Road Landfill, which is $92,450. This is mandated. Uh, we have to start filling uh, the landfill at Summers Road. Replacement of truck 77, this is a request from the DPW, that's an old truck, it needs to be replaced at 44,293. Replacement of truck 78, here again we're trying to maintain the infrastructure of the town and that's at 37,574. The new switch gear at the town hall is $30,000 and that's up to grade the electrical facilities at the town hall. Renovations to the town hall, uh, which was uh, explained by the DPW at $144,000. Other recommended uh, projects from, uh, for FY16 is the Water Enterprise Fund, uh, and that's to replace a water main on John Street at $188,500. The Sewer Enterprise Fund, that's inflow and infiltration projects. And what that is, is that the DPW inspects sewer lines for leakage uh, so that we don't have to pay the city of Springfield for unnecessary water that's leaking in our sewer uh, system. And that's at $100,000. We have a cable access revolving fund, and that's at $40,000. Recommended funded for uh, sourcing. We have from the general fund, we're recommending nine, 919,314 to be raised and appropriated. $253,204 from free cash. From the water enterprise fund, 188,500. From the sewer enterprise fund, $100,000. From the LCAT revolving fund, $40,000. So our general fund projects total, as our recommendation, $1,172,518. From the uh, Water Enterprise Fund, $188,500. From the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $100,000. And from the LCAP Revolving Fund, $40,000.
So our total recommendation this year to the town of East Long Meadow is $1,501,018. Thank you very much, Rocco. Uh, as is clear from the presentations that uh, both Eric Madison and Rocco Carabetta made, um, the budgets reflect uh, difficult choices because we have limited funds and caps on uh, state law caps on how much uh, we can raise and uh, a lot of potential uses for those funds. The meetings of the Appropriations Committee and the Capital Planning Committee uh, are open to the public. They're all posted. Uh, and uh, as both gentlemen had indicated, they start meeting in the fall. And uh, I would encourage uh, any voter to attend those meetings as uh, frequently as possible so you can understand the process and have input in the process. Uh, because again, uh, significant quality of life issues are, are made by the adoption of the budget, how much we allocate to public safety versus uh, education versus IT in town and other important uh, components of the town, and those are typically reflected in the budget. And I would like to again thank uh, both the chairs of both the appropriations and the capital planning committees for the uh, work that they and their committees have done over the past, uh, past year. As is the case in just about every year, many of the articles on the warrant are sponsored by the Board of Selectmen, and we'll go through them now. Articles four through six are sponsored by the Selectmen, and here to explain what those articles seek to accomplish is a member of the board, Angela Thorpe. Thank you, Jim. Well, Article 4 is basically um, with regards to the stabilization fund, and we're asking for $100,000 to be transferred. Um, I believe it is the um, recommendation of the Appropriations Committee for us to keep it at a certain level, and this is to build it up. It's a rainy day fund and the um, components are available should we need them. Let me uh, add into Please. the introductions. I should have introduced uh, Russ Denver, a member <laughs> of the Appropriations <laughs> Committee, who is here to answer any questions that I or Angela may have on the committee's recommendations or provide further explanation. And Russ, I believe the committee has attempted to fund the or recommended funding the stabilization fund for a number of years. Correct, and uh, the stabilization <coughs> fund um, along with the free cash, certified free cash, is mm -hmm. a is a certain amount of reserves that the town has set aside for rainy mm -hmm. day issues, and it's the guidance from the Massachusetts Department of Revenue that the town maintained between five and eight percent into right. reserves. So a portion each year of appropriated monies will go into the stabilization to make sure that we stay within that five to eight percent guideline from the Department of Revenue. And uh, under state law, it takes a two-thirds vote to put money into the stabilization fund account and also to take it out. So when we reach Article 4, that will require a two-thirds vote instead of a majority vote. Article 5, Angie? Well, Article 5 um, is a new mandate, um, a recent mandate um, by the state to have monies in our coffers for our retiree benefits. Um, last year, we did place some money into that account, and this year they're asking um, that we put $50,000 into that account. Um, it's going to take us some time to, to uh, be in compliance. Um, by the year 2025, it's going to take some, uh, quite a few bit of funds and transfers to be done. And so they, we have just recently taken it by the, the bull by the horns and started putting money aside. And so this is a request mm -hmm. so that um, to get us closer to being in compliance by the year 2025. Uh, a number of years that. ago, the town adopted a state statute which allowed the town to create a what's called an other post-employment benefit trust fund. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a trust fund established and maintained by the town. And the town has the ability to appropriate monies to go into the trust fund that can only be used to pay retiree, town retiree Tires. health insurance cost into the future. The town has uh, an approximate liability of almost $17 million for current and future retiree health cost. Okay. So it is the plan of the appropriations and in conjunction with the <coughs> Board of Selectmen to appropriate money each year into that trust fund and only the Board of Selectmen will be able to decide when those monies are released to be able to pay future claims for yeah. for retirees. And I think it's a great idea that we do it ahead of time as opposed to 
waiting until 2025 and have it mandated and Correct. then we'll really get smacked. And just to be clear, this this is these funds are only used for the health insurance uh, component, not for pensions or other. Correct. It's only for retiree <coughs> health insurance costs. Yep. Fine. Thank you. Article six. Um, Article six uh, is for prior year um, invoices that came in a little bit too late to close out with last the last fiscal year. And so this is a housekeeping um, article and it's to transfer $3,500. And, and we had some bills from in my understanding is that we had some invoices that came in from the clerk's office um, that didn't just make it. Um, it. We run into this problem when invoices come in in uh, late June and um, they don't just make they don't make it by the June mm -hmm. 30th for being processed. So we come back and ask for them to be processed now. Okay, thank you. Articles seven, eight, and nine on this year's warrant have been sponsored by the Board of Public Works. And here to explain those articles is John Maybury. John, thank you. So we'll get right into uh, Article Seven, which is Chapter Ninety. Uh, chapter 90 should be pretty familiar to most people. Uh, every year we have a Chapter 90, which is our streets. Uh, we get reimbursed by the state based on the miles of streets that we have in town, and we submit uh, to the town when we add streets. Um, and the uh, good news for this year is that the uh, legislature, the governor, and, and team have come up with some good money uh, for us to do the repairs. It is a year in which uh, we obviously need those repairs. We had a pretty harsh winter. Uh, I, I know most people have seen quite a bit of uh, road uh, damage, uh, potholes, cracks, etc. Uh, but the good news is we do have some good reimbursements through the Chapter 90. So I'm just going to explain uh, the number that we get to, which is uh, our FY15 number we would usually have to present was around $581,000. Uh, um, and as a re result of the another $100 million being allocated to the towns, that number was actually increased to $872,628. And then with all the pothole damage that occurred this year, uh, there was a wrap put in place which gave us another $87,263, which is an additional good piece of information for us to have. But then on top of that, the governor expedited uh, FY16 uh, numbers, uh, for which we normally wouldn't have at this time to bring to town meeting. Um, but with that all said and done, this year's Chapter 90, Article 7, will be for $1,548,333. Uh, so that's a, a very significant number that can get us uh, to a place where we think we can get our East Long Meadow streets back to where we really uh, expect them to be. Uh, we also did carry forward an additional uh, 500000 uh, from last year. So we have near $2 million to, uh, to spend in Chapter 90. So I know as you travel on some of the streets in town, um, it might not look like the good East Long Meadow roads that we've been accustomed to, but we're already out there now because we were given authorization to move forward right away, uh, making some repairs to some of the streets. Uh, and additionally, the streets that are going to be paved this year are already out to bid and being uh, prepared. So you'll see a lot of good activity this summer. We anticipate uh, probably utilizing 50% of that funding uh, where you'll see it this summer and then move into the balance of that to continue to take care of the, the streets for our Chapter 90. Uh, so this is just an article we need to approve so that we can go ahead and take the state funds and utilize those. Reference um, Article uh, eight, and 8 and 9. Article 8 is for the Water Enterprise Fund that Eric spoke to uh, when he was talking about Article 2 and the change in the DPW budget and how the uh, water Enterprise Fund and Sewer Enterprise Fund are working. Uh, we are going to have approximately $2.5 uh, million in uh, revenues from our water, and we are going to have expenses that match the 2.577139, um, and it's all outlaid in the warrant article so you can see the numbers. Uh, the bottom line is it was something that we worked through over the past two or three years, uh, changing the way we were actually doing our water um, revenues from the water usage in town and how we were doing our accounting. It was recommended and we, pr and we did pass last year, uh, recommended by the auditor to go to this enterprise fund. All town uh, boards and um, departments have worked together to collectively come up with the right solution for the water enterprise fund. And Article 9 takes us into the sewer enterprise fund, which is basically the same 
uh, mechanism. It's for the sewer fees that we collect, and that number is $1.9 million in expenses, $1.9 million in receipts, um, all spelled out on how it's going to happen in terms of where the money comes from and how the money gets expended. Um, and again, all worked out between the departments, the accounting, and now uh, the auditor is going to be quite pleased that we were able to work through this process. The water and sewer enterprise funds are very um, commonly used throughout other communities. It just took East Long Meadow a little bit to adopt and, and come to this point. So our articles are from the DPW are pretty um, straightforward this year, and uh, we hope to have everybody uh, approve them. Thank you. And as John and Eric have both said, uh, the adoption of the budget component for uh, the water and sewer will be slightly different, will be substantially different from prior years. The numbers are essentially the same. It's just that they are separately voted upon as opposed to being a component of the uh, general budget in, in Article 2. Article 10 is a citizen's petition designed to freeze the tax rates of uh, people uh, 70 years of age and older. Um, uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure that, well, actually, I am sure that this is not something that the town meeting, as powerful as the town meeting may be, its powers do not extend to classification of tax categories such as this. I'll be speaking with the petitioner in advance of the town meeting to discuss how this should be handled on the town meeting floor. Article 11 on the warrant has been sponsored by the Board of Assessors, and it has to do with relisting personal property and that's not something that many of us uh, normally deal with in terms of personal property taxes so here to explain uh, article 11 is chris solnier from the board of assessors thank you jim the board of, Ass of assessors is submitting this article requesting an appropriation of ten thousand dollars in order to comply with the commonwealth's bureau of assessment directive to us to our office to relist and recollect personal property, and this project is to be completed by 2017. Personal property is a tax levied upon uh, such things in, in a business, business equipment. Sometimes horses are considered personal property if they have a distinct value, and uh, small pop and mom and pop operations. Uh, we have about 650 accounts in the town and we have concluded about 410 are active accounts, but the town adopted a few years ago a limit. So if the personal property has a value of $1,500 or less, we do not tax it. It is tax exempt. But over $1,500 and up is taxed. And we have about 250 accounts that are, have substantial value and they comprise about $1,131,000 of our tax levy. So it's, it's a significant collection of tax. And when we had our values certified this past fiscal year, the chief of the bureau always issues directives to our offices what we have to do within the next couple of years. And this was part of the package. So. Uh, in essence, we have to go out, reinspect these properties, and uh, revalue them, relist them, determine inventories for different businesses. And I'm happy to say that the Appropriations Committee has recommended this article because it, it does have a significant impact. So is this sort of similar to, I know with the real, real estate taxes, the uh, properties get revalued periodically because of, I think, a state law. Yes. But you're saying with the personal property taxes, that's basically uh, done at the directive of the, of the Department of Revenue. That's correct. I and see. we haven't had to do this for a great number of years. So evidently, in looking at the history uh, and, and their auditing process, they've decided this needs to be done. Great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. The next group of articles sponsored by the Board of Selectmen are Articles uh, 12 through 15. And once again, uh, Angela Thorpe and Russ Denver will explain what is being asked. Thank you again, Jim. What has happened is LCAT did some, this very nice studio, and they had some money that's monies that were left over. So they're just primarily asking them to be placed back into um, their revolving fund. Okay. And 
right, now just that just so people should realize that LCAT is really funded through costs associated with the right. with their cost to the cable company each and every month it's a negotiated contract that mm -hmm. the Board of Selectmen has with Charter Cable right. so that monies come back for public access television which is our right. LCAT and it's if you want to look on your bill it's called those little things called access fee um, those funds are directed um, towards us and um, we have it in a revolving fund and Don Mackey's able to put on the wonderful programming um, that we see today and our sports programming and also some educational pieces. Great. Um, Article 13 is the same. Uh, there was still money from the LCAT facilities improvement project and so that'll go back into the um, the fund as well. And then those funds, uh, the nature of that particular uh, revolving fund is that all of the funds within that fund, mm -hmm. all the monies within that fund, are limited in use for LCAT purposes. Just LCAT purposes, <coughs> yes, and that's how it's stated in, in the contract mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And so um, I think um, I'm going to give a little plug, plug for Don Mackey. I think he's a nice uh, watcher of the facility and also um, over the money, and we have um, uh, committees that are working um, dil diligently along with him, and I think they are continuing to do great things, and I look for more from them. Um, with regards to Article 14, those are our revolving funds. Um, I will say we're doing things a little differently this year with the revolving okay. funds. Yeah, I did notice that myself. Um, for the benefit of the voters, uh, normally a separate vote, in, in the past, uh, a separate vote has been taken on each of the contributions to the revolving funds. They tend to be <clears throat> pretty non-controversial, um, and so through the efforts of our town accountant, Sarah Menard, uh, we are trying a new approach this year and collectively voting. I'll go through each of the components so we can do the same process that we do with the main budget if somebody wants to discuss any particular one of the appropriate requested appropriations uh, or transfers uh, we can uh, we can do a hold on on that one and then come back to it afterwards but otherwise we'll just take one vote for all of the revolving funds which will make the meeting a tiny bit more efficient so with that do you want to discuss those funds oh, well sure <clears throat> um, the ones that are involved are the, uh, the LCAT which is the local access television and again that comes from the peg fees and they're setting theirs up for one hundred and eighty thousand dollars there's the solid waste disposal and they're setting theirs up for seventy five thousand uh, dollars council on <coughs> aging just so you know they're um, Going back a little bit, I do apologize. The solid waste disposal, their um, revenue source comes from the selling of trash bags and the recycling um, materials. Um, and then Council of Aging, their money source comes from donations, memorials, uh, federal grants, and state grants. Now they are setting up their revolving fund for $100,000. And then the public library, and their uh, source of income comes from borrowers of the library. You know, you know, those overdue fines, hopefully we don't have too many of them, but they're putting them to good well, use. Well, if we do have them, maybe they're from Long Meadow. Well, you know, it's a <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> so, um, and so they're setting it up for fifteen thousand yeah, dollars. And, and once again, those dollars can only be used for library materials as well. Right. Exactly. So, exactly. Yep. And so there's a specific purpose for these funds, and we set it up to have a vehicle so that the monies can come out and they're not mingling with the uh, general fund. Okay. And so this way, they're able to go ahead and access that without. Mm -hmm. um, it's still there's still a paper trail, but um, it, they're able to have those separate from our general fund. Of course, if the people vote for that, that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. um, Article 15 is the parade money. We love a parade, and I know we differ on this one. And the, the, committee the, the committee does. The committee does. The committee does. The committee does. Yeah. Um, it's it's to have our our we're we're well known for our great parade that we put forth every 4th of July. And so this funding would, not for this July, but for the next fiscal year. It's not this year, but the next fiscal year. And we recommended it for it to go through. And 
The um, Appropriation Committee did not recommend the expenditure of that. That's a tough place to be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just the, kidding. No, the thought process behind the committee's recommendation is that there are many other uh, facets of the quality of life that we believe those funds could be used for. Mm -hmm. You know, additional police, yeah. additional fire, uh, you know, services like that. And we just feel that while those needs still have not been met, that those dollars would be better spent trying to meet those needs rather than, than the parade. Okay, so. I respect that. Mm -hmm. Russ's point uh, follows the comment I made when we discussed the overall budget in Articles 2 and, uh, and 3, that the, the budget and the warrant articles that deal with the expenditure of funds really reflect the uh, desires of the town uh, as to where the limited money that we have, where should it be spent. Um, and there are difficult choices that, uh, that need to be made and difficult recommendations on the part of the Appropriations Committee as these matters are discussed by that committee. Uh, I would again urge uh, uh, citizens to attend uh, the meetings of the Appropriations Committee and the Capital mm -hmm. Planning Committee they're all open to the public. Um, they are, uh, that's where these decisions get made. I mean, the ultimate decision on all of these is obviously made by you, the voters, but the recommendations of the committee and the budget that the committee presents all reflect what they understand to be and believe to be uh, in the best interests of the town. And if there are a number of town residents who feel otherwise, well, there's opportunity to have that input in the process and uh, uh, hopefully the budget will be reflective of what the majority of the people in the town want to spend the town's money on in terms of the difficult choices between education and public safety and recreation and, uh, as you know, a whole host of, of matters. Articles 16 through 19 on the warrant have been sponsored by the Community Preservation Committee. And here to explain what those articles seek uh, to accomplish for the town is George Kingston. Uh, I'm going to talk about Articles 16, 17, 18, and 19. These are all articles sponsored by the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, the Community Preservation Fund is funded by the 1% surcharge on property taxes plus a match from the state. And those are the funds that are being uh, appropriated here. These funds are restricted in their use to open space, outdoor recreation, affordable housing, and historical preservation. Article 16 is our standard um, housekeeping article that assigns the revenue that we get for the fund to the different uh, parts, d different funds for each of those uh, reserves, historical resources, community housing, open space, and the rest into the undesignated reserve. There is also an appropriation to um, fund, to transfer $4,500 uh, from the general fund, uh, general uh, unreserved fund, to uh, the town general fund for the bond anticipation note uh, on uh, the Brown property and $67,305 for the bond payment on the Brown property because those were originally paid uh, incorrectly out of the general fund. Article 17 is also a housekeeping article to rebalance the various reserves by transferring funds within the, from one fund to the other within the Community Preservation Fund overall, and also to make the same payments for the bond anticipation note and the bond um, for the next, for the fiscal year um, 2015. Article 18 is actually an expenditure article. We're asking uh, for $25,000 from the Community Preservation Historic Preservation Fund Reserve to digitize town records. The town records right now are mostly kept in paper copy in the basement of town hall and elsewhere around town hall. They are not secure and they're very, very difficult to reference. If someone wants a record like a birth certificate from the 1950s, uh, the town clerk has to have somebody go down to the basement and dig through the boxes to find it. By digitizing the records, we'll be able to, first of all, make sure they're preserved, and second of all, to um, make them much more accessible to town officials, town clerk, and also to town residents. Article 19 
is a appropriation to see if the town will expend a sum not to exceed $25,000 from the uh, legally designated undesignated reserve to carry out an engineering study and a plan to create playing fields at Heritage Park. The Recreation Department wants to see if they can put more playing fields up the hill behind the existing soccer field in Heritage Park, an area that is currently very much underutilized. However, they don't know if they're going to be able to do it because they don't know what the subsurface conditions are, whether they're going to run into uh, high water tables or ledge. And so they want to do an engineering study to find out whether or not fields are feasible up there. This is just a study. This will not pay for the fields and is not a commitment by the Recreation Com uh, Commission to actually put the fields in at a specific date. Thank you. Articles 20 through 22 are also sponsored by the Board of Selectmen, and once again, Angie Thorpe and Russ Denver. Okay, Article 20. Um, at our recent um, Board of Selectmen meeting, um, we had taken a vote which makes this article um, a no-action article. And just to, for the benefit of the voters, Article 20 was intended to deal well, with part-time employees' health insurance. Correct? Well, the elected officials' part-time. Elected part -time, officials, Because originally I, I did want it to expand to part-time across the board, and um, the board felt that it would only be, that it was best just to do the elected officials. Mm -hmm. However, um, with more information, um, we did end up taking a vote, and so it is not, this has to do with health insurance for elected officials. Um, and they are part-time. So now, as it stands now, um, effective as of June 30th, um, there will be no health insurance available. And this is just health insurance, dental and whatever else will be available, but there will be no health insurance available for elected officials. So unlikely then uh, that any action will be taken on There article. is no action that needs to be taken on that article. It was intended to um, ask the voters to increase the amount of money that the participants um, in the health insurance were paying from a 30% to 100%. Um, with more information, we found out that our concern and uh, and I heard it loud and clear from the appropriations, and forgive, correct me if I misspeak, is that we were, there was a, um, we were vulnerable as a town um, because of the amount of um, elected officials that we had and the amount that were taking advantage of the insurance. Should everyone have taken advantage of it, it would have caused um, quite a financial uh, quandary for the town of East Lamedo. So um, to eliminate that, um, that possibility, um, health insurance for elected officials has been eliminated. With that said, people who are currently on the health insurance, effective as of June 30th, they would be eligible for to pay 100% for a COBRA, for COBRA, which is what this was trying to do mm -hmm. for 18 months. Mm -hmm. So it won't be as if they would be cut off completely. Um, and at least 18, 18 months that they would have COBRA available to them at 100%. And so now that, you know, it's what was best for the town. Okay. And it was not an easy decision. I will, I will make I statements on that. I don't know if you need to add anything. No, to I just want to uh, acknowledge the hard work from the Board of Selectmen. Um, in December, the appropriations made a number of financial recommendations to mm -hmm. the Board of Selectmen to, to consider. And this was one, mm -hmm. because the potential liability, if every part-time elected official participated in the health insurance, mm -hmm. it would have been in excess of $300,000, right. which would have put a big hole in the next fiscal year budget. And so we asked the board to consider options, and, and you did. And so mm -hmm. uh, you're to be complimented on that. We tried a, a whole bunch of options. Um, and the other thing is, if we had passed this, it would have had to have been approved by our legislator uh, branch. And from my understanding, the it could be sent to committee, which could have left us li um, that liability mm -hmm. out there, and we would have been vulnerable. Sure. So with- When you say the legislative branch, you mean the state legislative yes. branch, not because the yeah. town meeting is the town's legislative branch. Oh, yeah, yeah, branch. no, I meant, right. I meant right. uh, the, Just for clarity. the state. And so um, understanding um, the predicament that we were in and just to, make sure that uh, the town was in good, in a good place. 
that's uh, the decision was made to uh, discontinue coverage. So Article 20, there would be no action. Article 21, uh, speaking of revenue, is, is yes. another uh, uh, concept that was uh, discussed by the Appropriations Committee mm -hmm. and then with the Board of Selectmen. And why don't you explain that has, this has to do with the meals tax. The meals tax. Um, it's an opportunity for people who are dining out in our town to uh, pay a meals tax. And what happens, we have, I think the estimate is that it would be $200,000 that would come into our town and we need the revenue. So um, we recommended that that go through. I don't know if you yeah, want to and add another recommendation that. from the Appropriations Committee to have the board consider. Uh, it does require approval at town meeting from the voters. Mm -hmm. And to put it into some perspective, on a $100 uh, bill at a local restaurant, the additional tax would be 75 cents. 75 cents. Okay. And so for the first fiscal year from the town, from July 1 through June 30, we would take in approximately 150,000 mm -hmm. because there's a, a, a calendar year quarter, oh, right. a lag on it. So for the first year, the estimated additional revenue would be $150,000, which mm -hmm. would go into the general fund. Okay. And then the next fiscal year would be in excess of $200,000, okay. which is, you know, another way to raise additional revenue uh, besides uh, real estate taxes. Real estate taxes. So, well, plus that which, revenue is generated from beyond East Long Meadow. I mean, it's As not, well. it's not yep. solely East Long Meadow residents. Exactly. And, and the revenue, it's, it's surprising to me uh, that uh, 75 cents on a $100 bill can add up to 200,000 bucks in a year. Yeah. Just that's that a, quickly. That's, yeah. It's a exactly. nice benefit. And, he, and if East Long Meadow adopts this, um, we're really kind of in unison with many other local communities that surround East Long Meadow exactly. that have adopted this as well. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Article 22? Article 22 is our senior work-off program. Um, it's going to the town to increase um, the amount of hours to 125 hours. Um, this program allows our seniors to come in. Uh, we have department heads that identify a need, and then we have seniors who have that particular skill set, and so they can work, and then that money comes off of their tax bill. So they volunteer for the work, but the, exactly. the benefit they get in return is a reduction in the, in the amount of taxes that they have exactly. to pay. And exactly. there is currently a limit on the number of hours, and that limit is, the request it's, is it's to increase that to 125. Exactly. Yeah, I see. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. And it's been recommended by the appropriations, and mm -hmm. the numbers were generated by the Board of Assessors, and everyone seems to be in agreement with this. Giving you another opportunity, because we want our seniors to stay. And this gives them an opportunity to work down some of the taxes. And we're also trying to keep our tax um, taxes down a little lower. So um, just to go back to the, with regards to the insurance, that'll be $72,000 that will be saved by eliminating uh, the insurance. Mm -hmm. So um, just some opportunities to save some money and then give some money out. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Finally, Article 23 is another citizen's petition, this one uh, also having to do with health insurance for, for elected officials. And I am not certain that any action would need to be taken based on what has been represented as being the actions of the Board of Selectmen on this very point. But secondly, and equally importantly, as I interpret the article, it seeks to compel the Board of Selectmen to amend their regulations to do something. And once again, uh, this is not a town meeting power. The town meeting is the legislative body. The Board of Selectmen is the town's executive body. And the legislative body can't tell the executive body what to do. I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation of the annual town meeting preview. A couple of things I would uh, bring to your attention. Um, the Appropriations Committee held a public hearing on the proposed budget. Uh, you can see a recording of that presentation on uh, the town's uh, LCAT's YouTube page, uh, on which this particular broadcast will also be uh, located. Um, and also for your consideration, uh, as you know, at the recent election, the town approved the establishment of a charter commission, which will be charged with, which is charged with the uh, the process of evaluating our current form of town government and making recommendations, if any, as to how, uh, what changes might be uh, considered appropriate by that commission. 
That process will take a period of time, a number of months. Uh, a representative of the Charter Commission will be speaking uh, briefly at the town meeting, and they will be holding a public hearing on, I believe it's May 27th, uh, at the Council on Aging uh, Media Room, uh, to which you're all invited to attend to learn more about the process, offer your input. And I do encourage you, as I always do, to uh, show up for the annual town meeting. It is our tremendously opportunity, a tremendous opportunity for you, the voter, to have a meaningful vote in how this town is governed. The town meeting is the town's legislative body, and the things that are done there are very important to the quality of life and the enjoyment uh, within the town of East Long Meadow. So I look forward to seeing you Monday, May 18th at 7 o'clock. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.